This is Fred Beck from Fred Dogs Fighting. I'm in London, Westfield today, joined by Gibbs coach Abdul. It's a few days from the fight. I guess you're still buzzing. Yeah, still buzzing, still on, um, on a high. But we're back to training now. You know, mm. like, like Gibbs said in the ring, we don't stop. You know, we're happy that we won. And yeah, we've got, we got a tournament to win. It's not just single fights, you know. How many days did Gibbs off? Was it two, three? So literally like um, about two, two days off. We had two days off and then back to the ground. You know, let your body recover, let your body rest. The fight never lasted that long. He didn't take too much damage. So we didn't have to have a prolonged rest time. So yeah, we're just back into training. See how it goes now. Mm. How do you make sure that Gibb doesn't overwork himself, like sustaining any injuries with the constant training? That is a very good question. You know, um, Gibbs is a hard worker. He likes to work hard. He really has to push himself. If it was up to him, he'll be stuck in living in the gym, you know? Um, but as, as the coaches, we have to control it. We have to keep him chilled. We have to um, make sure he's not overtraining. So it is a bit difficult because the guy's constantly trying to get in some more training. But um, yeah, we're just making sure that we're sticking to our programs. Everything's programmed and we stick to those programs. Mm. I remember Gib getting a massage after the fight, so I guess he knows his kind of restaurant recovery routine exactly. quite well. Exactly, exactly. We don't, there's no stone unturned in our camp, you know, whether it comes to the diet, whether it comes to the um, recovery, whether it comes to training, every aspect for Gibbs is covered. So we make sure we all, all work together. That's what I love about the team. We all work together to make sure we get the best results. Mm, certainly. And you're clearly doing that, so yeah. it ain't too bad. I didn't manage to catch you. I think I caught you for a good 30 seconds after, but then everyone's waiting for Gib, and after a fight, it kind of gets more chaotic. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. quite hard to do things like a, yeah. a straight routine order. So just run me through the fight. The, what's the game plan in the Osmond Broom, the same one as the last time, or do you switch things up a little? Um, so a similar game plan, a very similar game plan, um, but we're tweaking. Constant word you'll be hearing in our camp is tweaking. Everything's always tweaked. We never, anything's set in stone. We're always seeing how it is, feeling it out, and going off of that. So um, it's not like a freestyle. So we have set game plans, but we're just tweaking it, tailor, tailoring it to make it the best suited for the, for the opponent. Mm. So a very similar game plan. Control, control from the lead hand. Um, if he moves forward, we have a, what we call reversals. If he goes on the back foot, we've got our press fighting. If he moves left, we've got something. If he moves right. Mm -hmm. So every aspect of training or every aspect of the fight is covered in, in the game plan. Mm -hmm. Certainly, and clearly it did do that. Um, but run me through the fight. Was it the second round that Austin got injured or hurt his ankle or yeah. hopped out? Yeah, so a um, bit upset with the, with the actual fight, to be honest. Um, not going to lie, felt like everyone got robbed of um, a great fight. You know, uh, first round, control, setting the, setting the tempo, seeing how things, seeing how Matt Broom is. Is Matt Broom any faster? Is he any stronger? What is going on? Once we found that out, we told him to up the pace a little bit, work towards the body, cut the ring off and stuff like that. And then as, the, as it got, the heat started turning up, you know the saying, if you, can't, if you can't take the heat in the kitchen, you want to get out. And that's literally what happened. Austin found a way to get out of the ring, mm -hmm. you know. Um, we, me personally, I've broken my hand and I've broken my foot. And uh, walking on your foot for two minutes afterwards is a bit difficult <laughs> to do, you know. I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm not going to say that Austin is lying. Of course, you feel something, but a broken foot. Is, is not something you walk lightly on. A twisted ankle, you start hobbling, you know. All right, afterwards, after like 10, 15 minutes, he started hobbling and got carried out. But, you know, it, was, um, it took a little while to get there. So we're, we're a bit, nee, did, he, did he really? But um, a bit upset because the amount of work and the game plan we had for you guys. Oh, if the game plan... Can you got, tell me the game plan? Can you tell uh, me the game plan? I can't give away too much information. I wish I could. I can't give too much information. But it would have been very similar to the first one. But all the mistakes he had in the first fight, we had covered. You know, so you would have seen, you would have seen some amazing knockouts, some amazing body shots, cutting off the ring, sweet science of boxing. You know, sweet, sweet science of boxing. But it is what it is. We don't, we don't dwell on the past. We only look for the present and the future. You know, so now we're on to the next fight. 
I spoke to Liam Chippers, I did an interview with him, a good 40 minute one on Zoom, and he was saying that McGroom didn't break his ankle. And I was saying, well, do you think it was going to be a twist, or do you think I like, sprained it? Do you think anything was wrong with it, or do you want like, stepped on the side of it and hurt it? Um, I'll be honest with you. If you look back at the footage, you'll see Gibbs hits him with a body shot. From there, they tie up. After that, the ref breaks it. He looks back at his corner, and it looked like to me he didn't want no more smoke, you know. And then from there, they continued the bout, and they tied up again. Gibbs turned him, and then from there, it, like, yeah, he could have felt, might have felt a little twing in the ankle or something. He might have felt a little like, ooh. But, you know, when you're, we've got a saying, when you're in deep water, you'll find any excuse to get out. You know, and that's what we think. It, that's what we think happened to him. We found he. We feel like he was in deep waters. He felt he was like, "Oh my God, I'm about to get my ass whooped again. I can't be bothered. This is no good." Okay, yeah, my ankle's hurting. That's enough for me to stop. Mm. That's how. That's me personally. That's how I felt the fight went. And if his ankle, or if he hadn't used excuse the ankle, would you think he would have stopped in the next round? When do you think it would have happened, and how would it have happened? Um. Yeah, we think. I personally, and me, Gibbs, and the rest of the team personally think that it would have ended either in the next round with a body shot or body shot to head. It would have been good. A body, a body shot would have been good because no one really goes down to the body and implements boxing. Yeah. I don't think, I think Faye Sensei is the only, has, I think Faye Sensei has the only influencer boxing body shot stoppage. Yeah. And that was all the way back in like 2019, 2018. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So ages. Exactly, exactly. So watch the, watch the footage back when you have time and see every time you got hit to the body you see a little like eh, you know a little. so we felt like and Gibbs was getting better with the timing you know as a fight you even some some of the best fighters when you have when you have a weapon that you're good at and you throw it it takes a few rounds for it to really catch up and then to really have an effect so you if you watch the fight back again you'll see the body shot started to weigh up on him and he started to we got hit with a good body shot and his elbow was stuck next to his uh, liver. <laughs> so that was a good sign for us. And then I feel like personally it would have been either a body shot would have dropped him or body shot, he tried to defend it and then went upstairs to the head. Mm. Mm. That's true. He was going down to the body a lot more than he usually does. Yeah. Which is obviously kind of you've seen the improvement, you've seen the levels yeah. grow more and more. Jarvis will be his next opponent. Yeah. It's quite good doing interviews now because now you know who the next opponent is. Yeah. You don't have to say, who do you want next? All those, yeah, yeah, all those yeah, cringy yeah, questions. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. say, right, is this guy next? Yeah. How do, you th- how do you think Gibb matches up against Jarvis? How do those styles match? I think if, you wanna, if you're a fan and you want to pick any fight, yeah. Gibb and Jarvis is just two balls coming together and just yeah. fighting, yeah. just straight at each other. Yeah, it's literally going to be the bull and the matador. Yeah. You know, I, that's, I always use yeah, that, I always use that bull saying. And, the yeah. bull and the matador. It's going to be like that with uh, Gibb and Jarvis. But two, but two balls, no yeah. matador. Yeah, so what's going to happen is that you're going to see, you're going to see a very intelligent hopefully the words you're going to be coming back from the next fight is while Gibbs is really intelligent he has sweet understanding of what boxing is and understands how to stop a bull from rushing forward mm. so we'll give you in the back foot turning him spinning him um, left hook. yeah so you'll be seeing like, some of those moves you'll be seeing him hit with like all different angles you know uh, Jarvis got hit and got caught with a lot of shots that he shouldn't have been getting caught with when he fought with Zanetti, you know. Um, if Gibbs throws those same shots that Zanetti fought, threw, sorry, if Gibbs threw the same shots that Zanetti threw, it would be a different result because um, Zanetti is a very strong athlete, very, very strong guy, but he doesn't use his body mechanics as well, mm-hmm. you know. So, and well, that's what one. Do you mean? What do you mean body mechanics? Do you mean like using his size and reach and, the, yeah, and how yeah, old he is? Exactly. So um, what, what he does is he throws a lot of punches, very good, but he doesn't twist into them. He hasn't got that final, you know, je ne sais quoi when it comes to the punch, you know, that last bit landing. So more, quanti- more quantity than quality. Yeah, no, more quality, less quantity. So I would, he has no, got yeah, more. Yeah, sorry. I mean like, yeah. He, Zanetti was throwing more quantity rather than the yes, quality of punches. Exactly, exactly, exactly that. And that also burns you out, especially when you're, when you're tensed up and you're throwing the shot, you burn more energy rather than just being relaxed and just popping your shoulder and popping the hips behind it, you know? So um, that's hopefully what Gibbs is going to be bringing to the table. So um, Jarvis, you better you keep those hands up. 
keep those hands up because um yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be a beautiful it's gonna be beautiful to watch hopefully if it's not like what happened with zanetti or with uh mcbroom it's gonna be a beautiful fight to watch do you see gear pushing stoppage here or do you see it going the distance honestly as a coach honestly as a coach i've got it as gibbs is gonna Gibbs is gonna do something beautiful and he's gonna drop him if the game plan goes how it how we've got it mastered it's gonna be a beautiful fight and um, yeah, we're gonna see Jarvis is gonna have to, you know, take a knee, you know. So we'll see how it goes. Mm, definitely, definitely interesting one. One more point on the fight: Do you believe that Gibb versus Jarvis will be the main event, or do you think it will be Zanetti? Sorry, do you think it will be um, Winston Nunes versus King Kenny? Um, to be honest, to be honest, to be honest, I have no idea because, like, oh, let's be, let's talk truths. That Brazilian crowd that came out, wow. I thought I was in Rio de Janeiro, you know, like I thought I was in Brazil when, I, when uh, he came out. So I'm very happy that people came down to support their fighters. You know, that's what should be happening. People should be coming down to support their fighters. So Gibbs fans should be coming down. Um, Jarvis's fans should be coming down. You know, um, Nunes's fighters should be coming down. Kenny's fighters should, King Kenny's fighters should be coming down. We should be having a bunch of people coming down supporting their athletes, you know, because they're doing it for you guys, you know. At the end of the day, they, they lo- all of them love fighting, but they love it more when they have a crowd that's there shining at their name. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, there's no better feeling as a, as a, as a fighter. So um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I w- as a coach, I would say oh, we're main event, yeah. 100% main event. But that crowd that came down last time, if it comes down again, yeah, they should be main event, maybe. But then again, it's Dublin. That's and exactly so how many Brazilian fans are going to travel to Dublin? I mean, Brazilian fans, word on the street is they gave away tickets to Brazilian fans for free. Yeah. So I can't really see how many Brazilian fans will travel all the way to Dublin, yeah. if I'm being honest. Maybe yeah. Gibb does deserve the main event there. Exactly, exactly that. Um, so, yeah, word on the street was what it was. You know, I mean, I don't like to listen too much word on the streets because word on the streets is someone broke their foot from a body shot. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, so I don't really like to listen to well on the streets, but the people that still came down, they supported their fighter, you know, and so hopefully in, in Ireland, we're going to see a whole bunch of Irish people coming down supporting Gibbs. So yeah, I'm excited for that. Have you been to Ireland before? Um, I've been to Ireland before, okay. but, um, but it wasn't for boxing, it was more for Muay Thai. Right. So I went down there for the Muay Thai scene. Um, one of my favorite fighters, uh, Greg Wooten, he won, his, uh, he won a title out there, and that was an amazing fight against a really hard opponent. And, yeah, we went down there. And the Irish fans are amazing. The Irish fans are amazing. They are so passionate. I think Irish and Brazil fans are really passionate. So, um, yeah, that would be, be sick to see. Certainly. Just one more thing before I let you go. Winston Nunes versus King Kenny. How does yeah. that fight go? Because the winner of that will face the winner of Jarvis and Gibb in the final. Yeah. So surely you are thinking about who might win that one. Um, yeah, no, 100%. Um, so this is how I've got it. I've got it as um, King Kenny, style-wise, is going to win the fight. He's, such, he's such, a slick, such a slick fighter. So beautiful. He's got such a beautiful jab, you know. So in terms of that, um, I will say he'll win. But uh, Nunes came out with some slick footwork. You saw that footwork. I thought he was doing a bit of salsa on that, on that in the ring. So that was beautiful to watch. Um, I think he's got, uh, he's got more of a variation of style to him, even though his opponent was not, not great, you know. But at the end of the day, he showed off some beautiful skills and done it really amazing, you know. So, yeah, I feel like... If it's going to go to points, it's going to go to Kenny. And if it's going to not go the distance, I think it'll go to um, Nunes. Mm, that's fair enough. Yeah. I guess it's, you got to do your job and they'll do their job. Yeah. So we'll see how it unfolds. But I do appreciate you coming all the way down here today. No. I know you're training in the evening, yeah. so you're a busy man. Yeah, no, we, you know, we've got um, all our fighters are just excited to start training again. Mm. You know, so they're all like, they're all getting ready. Like today I had Dylan saying to me, coach, let's start today. I want to start sparring. I'm like, nah, let, let Gibbs relax. So uh, Dylan is, so we've got, we got like quite a few amateur boxers. Okay. 
that come down to uh, that we train together. We've been training for a little while since the since the uh, what was the one in in um, not the one before social last. Gloves. Yeah, social gloves. Mm. Since social gloves, we've been we've been having a strong net team of um, of uh, quite a few passionate fights. What I like to do is I like to bring people that are passionate together. You know, so sometimes you'll get pro fighters, but they haven't really got the passion. They don't really want to do overtime. They don't really want to push themselves. So what I like to do is get the hardcore amateur fighters and bring them down. Amateur fighters, amateur fighters, are, fighters are always very hungry. Exactly. That's I notice. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So um, and they all come with variety of styles. So pretty much everyone that is on the card, we've got a very similar style amateur fighter like them. Mm-hmm. So. Um, we had someone that was like McBroom. We had someone that's like Kenny. We had someone that's like um, uh, Nunez. We got someone that's like uh, Jarvis. So we've got those little fighters that are just like the other ones, you know. So we get to see those styles, you know. So, yeah, man. You're going to see, hopefully, out of this as well, you're going to see some of my other boys make some big names for themselves, you know. So you've got like uh, Dylan who's an amazing fighter, so slick, so far, so passionate. You've got um, Sabir, who now is breaking away to the MMA scene. Um, he's, he's, he's a Somalian pirate. He's killing it. He's absolutely destroying the MMA scene, but he loves boxing. He loves boxing so much. Um, we've got the two Gabriels. We've got a Brazilian boy. So, Nunez, any, any slick talk you might bring to the table, we've got someone to translate for us, <laughs> you know? So... Um, we got another gay bro as well, and then we got um, Beezy. So we got our little team together. You saw the picture on, on my on my Instagram. They're there, they're up. You know the brothers are all together, ready to help Gibbs overcome any obstacle brought his way. Awesome. Yeah. Has he got a plan there? Just one last thing. Prediction. This is the job. This is Gib. How does it go on the, on the night? On the night, um, prediction. Hopefully, like I said, if it all goes to plan, Jarvis is taking a knee. Yeah, so hopefully, if it all goes to plan, we're going to be taking Jarvis out. We're not here for, we don't get paid for overtime. So we're trying to take people out. You know, we're not, we're not crazy. And we're not going to go round one, fight, and try and knock each other out. But hopefully, it's not going to go the distance if, if the plan goes together perfectly. Awesome. Wish you the best of luck. And hopefully, you I'll so see much. you in Dublin. Thank yes, you. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, I'd just like to say, uh, your first interview I've done with you, and this is my second interview yeah. with you, and it's been amazing to do interviews with you. Like, every time I'm thinking to myself, he's going to drop some trick questions, he's going to make my life difficult. What has Gib been yeah. telling you? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, like, you're, you're very good at interviewing. I was even watching some of your other interviews, and everyone is right. When it comes to interviews, you're the main man, so you. big <laughs> yourself up, man. Big yourself up. Keep, keep grinding, keep pushing it, and hopefully you get some big opportunities as well on, uh, on the interviewing scene. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you.